Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. Character, okay, look this time. Mark your song books. The song 437 will be the song after the lesson. It'll be 437. It's convenient for you. Please stand as we sing 577. 577. <clears throat> Everybody's sunlight. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep Jesus has said I'll never forsake thee from the sea Psalm 35, 9, and 10. 
The healing of sickness, Isaiah 38, 20. The word salvation in the Old Testament also refers to a national deliverance from military threat. We find it in Exodus 14, 13. In the New Testament, salvation has its deepest meaning in the spiritual realm. Our most indisputable need for salvation of our souls is one of the clearest teachings of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Most people think salvation only relates to a person's obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible use of the word salvation is much broader. The scriptures speak of being saved in three tenses and senses. In one place, the scriptures say that we have been saved, past mm -hmm. tense. In another place, they say that we are being saved, present tense. Mm -hmm. And yet in another place, the scriptures say we will be saved, future tense. Mm -hmm. All of these statements are true. <laughs> and understand them how we are saved in these three tenses and senses helps to avoid wrong ideas about the Christian's soul salvation. Mm -hmm. It will, it will also help us to gain a true assessment and assurance of the salvation that is in Jesus Christ. Amen. We have been saved. Mm -hmm. God has already saved each and every Christian. In this sense, salvation is equated with the forgiveness of sin. 2 Timothy 1, 8, 9. 2 Timothy 1, 8, 9. Second Timothy 1, verses 8 and 9. And it reads, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Paul speaks in his letter to Timothy. But share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus, before the ages begin. So here Paul is telling Timothy, we have been saved because of God, because of not because of work that we've done, but because of his own purpose. Amen. We are saved from the penalty of sin. Justification. When we come out of that water, we're just like we have never sinned. We've been pardoned from our sin. We were guilty, but now we've received a pardon. Man. Ephesians 2 8. Ephesians 2 8. Here Paul, Ephesians 2, verse 8. And here Paul again said the same thing he just said in 2 Timothy. Mm -hmm. Verse 8 he says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Amen. Not a result of works so that no one may boast. So we've been saved through faith. And it's not our own doing. It is the will of God. Amen. Amen. We have been saved. As long as we've obeyed the gospel and done what God has told us to do, we've been justified. Mm -hmm. And now Ananias' his words to Paul, Acts 22, 16. Paul, or Ananias is still Paul here in verse 16. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. So when Paul was baptized, he was saved. He had entered into the family of God. Man. Paul obeyed the gospel, yet his sins washed away, he was saved. Man. And Paul writes to Titus about the kindness of God. Titus 3, 4, and 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 4 and verse 5. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Mm -hmm. Once again, not because of works done by us in righteousness, 
So over and over we keep seeing it's not because of something we've done. Right. It's not because of our righteousness, but according to his own mercy, Amen. by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. So we can, just the passage we read, we can summarize that it's nothing we've done. That's right. Amen. It's nothing we've done to receive this salvation. It was because of the grace of God. Amen. We have to keep that in mind. We have been saved. Amen. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6.11. And before that, in verse 9, he tells them about the unrighteous when I inherit the kingdom of God and all the unrighteous things that people were doing, participating in. And then in verse 11, the first Corinthians chapter 6, he says, and such were some of you. And he says, you were washed, you were sanctified, set apart, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Amen. So all these examples, we have been saved. These individuals have been saved. These Corinthians have been saved. Mm -hmm. By their obedience, they were added to the church. They were saved. Amen. And then we go to, we are being saved. <laughs> Present tense. <laughs> now we have been saved, but we are still being saved. Right. Well, what are you talking about? We are being saved from the power of sin. Mm -hmm. Sanctification. See, when we come out of that water, I said this before, there's still some habits, still some things that we got to work on. Man. Man. You might be a smoker. When you come out of that water, you just gonna automatically stop smoking. <laughs> you're a drinker. When you come out of that water, you're going to automatically stop drinking, but you got to work on those things. Man. That's right. First Corinthians chapter 1, eight, the verse will be 18. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. First Corinthians chapter 1, the verse will be 18. For the word of the cross is folly or foolishness to those who are perishing. But to, all, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discernment of the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Mm -hmm. Paul says that we are being saved. It is the power of God. Amen. So we just gotta let ourselves let the power of God take over through this word. Mm -hmm. Nothing miraculous. Mm -hmm. It's through this word that the power of God can transform our life. Amen. God is still saving every Christian in this sense. Salvation is equated with the Christian's growth and steadfastness. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people, when they become Christians, they are here for a while and then they go back to the world. Yeah. You see, in order for us to stay here, we have to grow and we have to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. We have to endure the things that come into our lives. We have to endure those things. Mm -hmm. And if we believe that Jesus Christ died and God has all power, we can endure. We can endure. Man. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 and 2. So a lot of people, a lot of Christians think they don't have to grow or they don't have to be steadfast or they forget about being steadfast. <laughs> But to continue to be saved, you have to be that. You have to be that. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. And we were talking about this this morning in, in, in the class. Paul says in his letter to the church of Corinth, he says, Now I will remind you, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. There's a little word again. If... You hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Paul's saying, by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you. Did you hold on to it or did you let it go? Mm -hmm. 
Did you hold on to it or forget about it? Did you hold on to it and the world pushed it out? Paul says, you're still being saved if, if. <laughs> Paul writes to the Philippians about salvation. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. A lot of people that become Christians, they become, well, they start as participants, but down the road they become observers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're no longer participants, they just observe everybody else doing the things that they ought to be doing. Man. They were participants at first, and now they're just observers. And you can't grow being just an observer. You're not going to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Paul writes to the church of Philippi, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Man. See me, I gotta I gotta work out my own salvation. I thought God was had saved me. All I have to do is just wait. <laughs> what do you mean I gotta work? Yeah. I gotta work out my own salvation? I thought God was gonna do all that for me. <laughs> all I had to do was just wait for Jesus to come back or just die. And then I'll get you in the heaven. No. <laughs> no. He said, work out your own salvation. Man. Work it out. It's up to each individual, including me. Mm -hmm. Especially me. Work out my own salvation. You know what that means? It means getting out of your comfort zone, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. Yeah. Staying in that comfort zone. You don't want to do nothing. You don't want to work out your soul salvation because I'm scared or I don't want to do that. I'm not good at that. What? God asked us to do it, and he knows we can do it. We just Man. have to get past that. Man. Man. We are being saved. Paul writes in Corinthians of those who are being saved. 2 Corinthians 2.15. 2 Corinthians 2.15. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. For we are the aroma of Christ to God. Among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. We are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved. Amen. We're still being saved because we're still trying to get some of those things out of our lives. Starting to get more understanding. The more understanding we get, the closer walk we can have with God. Amen. Amen. The closer walk we can have with God. Amen. The more understanding we get from His Word. We are talking about this morning about so how valuable God's Word is. Amen. How valuable it is to the soul, to us, to everyday living. Here we do not have past tense. We have the word being saved used in a present and ongoing sense. We're saved for those of us who obey the gospel. We're saved, but it doesn't stop there. Amen. We are continually to are being saved by God. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit through this book we call the Bible. Mm -hmm. We can continue to grow, continue to be steadfast, continue to endure. Peter makes a clear statement on our salvation, 2 Peter 1.10. 2 Peter 1.10. See, before that, he was saying all these things you need to add in there. You've added faith because you, you've become a Christian. So you've acted on that faith. Now you've got to add some more things. Amen. Now some more things you need to add. And in verse 10 of 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, he says, Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election 
For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Man. You will never fall. I'll go back up there. He says, for talking about all these qualities of knowledge, self-control, virtue, he says, for if these qualities are yours and are increasing, mm -hmm. they keep you from being ineffective, oh, watch out, and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Ineffective and unfruitful if you continue to grow in these things. If you continue to move forward, be partakers of the divine nature. And I just let me just run through them. Add to your faith with virtue, virtue with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. Amen. Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. Mm -hmm. So just becoming a Christian is not the end. But we all know it's the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of working out our own soul salvation. And it's up to each and every one of us to do so. Man. God, God's not going to work it out for us. That's right. He did already justified us. He already gave us a pardon. Now he says, work out your own soul salvation. Mm -hmm. Work it out. I've already gave you the information in this book. Now you work it out. Man. We are being saved. We are being saved. Sanctification. We have a part in our own sanctification. We have our own, we have our own part in 1 Corinthians 9.24. It's not on God's part. A lot of people feel like it's just on God's part about us. It's on us. <laughs> Our salvation is on us to work it out, to grow, to be steadfast. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24. And Paul says, do you, do you not know that in a race all runners run? See, some people... They, they don't run as if they want to win. They just want to finish. <laughs> we got to run this race like we want to win, right? Man. He says, but only one receives the prize. And then Paul says, so run that you may obtain it. And then at 25, he says, every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Man. He says, don't run aimlessly. Don't bop this one beat in the air. Don't waste your time. But discipline, he says, but I discipline my body to keep it under control. That's after preaching to us, I myself should be disqualified. <laughs> Paul knew that if he didn't stay there, if he didn't continue, he had a chance of being disqualified himself. Man. We're always holding Paul up and understanding, rightly so. But Paul did the thing. He said, I can still be disqualified. That's right. I can still perish. So he did the thing that would make sure the, that he was assured with working out, working out his soul salvation. At one point he says, Well, if I do not preach the gospel, mm -hmm. we are to give ourselves wholly to God. Romans 12 1. See, when you come out of that water, you don't understand or, 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 or have the real knowledge to give yourself wholly to God. Now, you've done it to be baptized and become a Christian, but there's a, so much more you have to do mm -hmm. to give yourself wholly to God. Man. And here, Paul in his uh, letter to the church of Rome, he says, I appeal to you, brothers, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice. Now, back in the Old Testament, what did those people do who sacrificed an animal to, to, the, to God? When they sacrificed, they gave all right from, the, from that animal. They didn't own it anymore, right? right? It was not theirs anymore. And here Paul is saying, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. 
It's not our body, it's the Lord's body. Amen. We should give ourselves wholly unto him. And then he says, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Amen. So when we present our body as a living sacrifice, we are to give our whole self to him. Holy. And so that just takes understanding and knowledge. Understanding how we do that. How do we give ourselves wholly unto God? That just comes with understanding and study. We are to deny ourselves. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. I'll read it again. It says, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. Let's preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. He, he disciplined his body to keep it under control. So we have to deny ourselves if we want to continue to be saved. We have to deny those things that are evil, those things that are alluring to us, to the flesh. We have to deny those things. We can we we move away from them. Uh, don't get enough put ourselves in those situations. We are being saved, sanctification. So we are to give ourselves holy to God. We are to deny ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are to keep our eyes fully fixed on Christ. He's our example and our strength. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Begins here at 12, it says, therefore, going back to chapter 11, uh, the Hall of Fame of Faith, all these individuals were faithful and did these things, showing their faith. Amen. And then Paul says, therefore, after saying all that, he says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, since we have all this evidence that people just like us can be faithful, let us also lay aside every way. Mm -hmm. Talking about participating or running again or giving or that type of analogy. Lay aside every way and sin which clings so closely. Mm -hmm. And let us run with endurance that the race that it, the race that is set before us. He says, look into Jesus. If we can do this for instance, we keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. The example he laid for us, I said this morning. Jesus has already made a trail. All we have to do is follow. Man, man. All we have to do is follow. Look into Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. The founder and perfecter. He did it right. He did it right. And he goes on to say, who for the joy? For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. The joy that was set before him. The joy that is set before us. The eternal joy that is set before us. Before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Keeping our eyes on Jesus, he did it the right way. Amen. Amen. All we have to do is follow him. All we have to do is try our very best to do it just like he did. Is it hard? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. We remember him in the Garden of Gethsemane. It was hard, but Amen. he did it. Amen. It's hard for us, but we can do it. Amen. We are to keep our eyes on that crown of righteousness as our reward. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 9, 24 and 25. Keep our eyes on the prize. The crown of righteousness has been promised. Has been promised to us mm -hmm. as our reward. Mm -hmm. And once again, do you not know that that in a race all the runners run? Yes. Everybody runs, but only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain it. Run like you want that prize. Amen. 
Don't just run and you like, I just want to finish. No, run like you want to get that prize. We shall be saved. Amen. We shall be saved. We have been saved. We are being saved. We shall be saved. <laughs> this, there is a sense in which salvation is a future event. In this sense, salvation is equated with the second coming of Christ. Glorification. Romans 5, 9 and 10. Romans 5, 9 and 10. Paul is a letter to the church at Rome. Romans 5, verse 9 and 10. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, we've been saved, we've been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Amen. That means those who are not a part of his body, those who are not in the church, they're going to feel the wrath. Mm. They're going to feel the wrath. But if we keep on doing what we're supposed to do as Christians, we can avoid that. We don't have to go that route. Hebrews 7, 25. We have faith in God that he will do what he says he will do. Amen. We have faith. We believe that. The writer of Hebrews believed that too because he wrote this. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, through Jesus, since he always lives to make intercession for them. He is able to save us. He's not going to save us without our participation. Let's get that straight. He's not going to, he's not going to save us without our participation, Amen. without us working out our soul salvation. Amen. But he will save us. He can save us. Mm -hmm. He says Christ always lives to make intercession. We got a, we got a, Christians, it's a good deal. We've been justified. We've been saved. All we have to do is follow Christ. Amen. Amen. There's nothing, there's nothing we're not blind when we don't know what we're supposed to do or where we're supposed to go. Follow Christ. The Holy Spirit is given to Christians as a promise of eternal salvation. For Ephesians 1, 13, 14. Uh, begin at verse 11, Ephesians chapter 1. In him we have attained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise of Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. The Bible tells us we've been sealed a down payment, but it's not something that, that can't be forfeited. Mm -hmm. right. Just like our salvation can be forfeited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say that uh, we can't lose our salvation. Yes, we can. Amen. We can walk away anytime we get ready. Mm -hmm. God's not going to stop us. He's not going to stop us. That's all right. We can walk away anytime we get ready. Things get too hard, we can go our own way. But we have a penalty to pay if we, pay if we stay there. Right. Paul speaks of the hope of salvation, 1 Thessalonians 5.8.
beginning of verse 7. He makes a contrast. I love these contrasts in the Bible where he uh, contrasts one way from another way or one side from another side or evil from uh, 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 evil from good or dark and light. In verse 7, Paul writes this, For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having on the breastplate of, of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. We have been saved. We are continuing to be saved. And then we will be saved. Well, when we were saved, it, it was our own decision. We opted upon that faith and allowed ourselves to be baptized. But now, since we are in the body of Christ, we have to continue if we are to be saved. Amen. We have to continue, but we have to let God work His way in us so we continue to be saved or continue to are being saved. Amen. It's up to us. Now God, He'll do all He will do. But we got to do our part. Amen. Amen. We have to do our part. That's right. It's up to us. Just like we're here in this assembly, we have to make sure that those who we work with, those we go to school with, mm -hmm. some of our neighbors, we have to tell them about Jesus Christ. That's right. Because their soul, just as much as ours, are in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. They don't know Christ if they don't know Jesus Christ. They don't understand that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins, for the whole world. They don't understand that. So they continue to do evil, continue to go their own way. So it's up to Christians to change that and to do what they can in order to help others. If you're here this evening and you're not a Christian, we encourage you to become one. Our desire is that you become a Christian right now if it's your choice. We want you to become, because we understand the value of the soul. We understand how God, the wrath of God, because it tells us in his book we call the Bible. Mm -hmm. So if you are a Christian, we, you have to hear the word. Then believe what you hear. Believe what you hear wholeheartedly. And then you have to repent of your sin. Start going a different direction. Have a different mindset mm -hmm. because that's what God desires. God desires when, when you are saved, he, de he demands a change. Man. He demands a change. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a Christian and continue in the world. Amen. You're just deceiving yourself. Mm. And after repenting, then you have to make the good confession as the Ethiopian eunuch did in Acts chapter 8 verse 37. Philip asked him, he said, I believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, with all my heart. Mm. And then you allow yourself to be baptized. That's right. For the, for the remission of your sins. And sometimes we have to say that because some people don't believe that. Baptized for the remission of your sins and then you are saved. Then you're in the family of God, you're in the body of Christ and now you have an inheritance waiting on you. Amen. And here tonight, tonight, if you are a Christian, you haven't been living right, now's the time to get it right with God. Yes. Now is your opportunity to repent and get right back yes. with God because your sins have separated you from the only true and living God. Now's the opportunity to get back in that right relationship. Or if you're just going through some things, we all go through things from time to time. Amen. You just need prayer. If you just need prayer, let the congregation know, and we will pray for you. If you're subject to the invitation, come forward now as we stand and sing. Amen. Living me, the Lord, in this whole simple world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the
to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them everyone. We get along between the poor. But when my soul needs manna from above, where Oh. 